Uh, favorite spots right up on top of the hill here. We can see Keene. We can see everything around here. You can get the whole farm in, in, uh, from up on top of the hill there. And you can see the city of Keene up here. And uh, you missed about the whole area. And uh, But uh, it, uh, it takes in all the buildings and everything. It, uh, that's about the best place. That we got uh, two farms here. We got a, a farm up the road here at 207. Got 118 acres up there that my great grandfather got for serving in the War of 1812. And we're the fourth generation to own it. Wow. And uh, this land here, we've owned it since 38. My father bought it and traded in 38. Started out milking cows, and when we first got started, uh, we took over, and uh, my wife and I took over in 45, after I got out of the Army. And uh, we milked cows for several years, and then we got into hogs pretty heavy, and we always had sheep. Uh, we uh, we fed, fed cattle there for several years, and, but uh, and then the last... Uh, the whole last 10 years, we've just been grain farming and, and, and pasturing some sheep. Things have sure have changed a lot in the last 50 years. We started out here with horses, and we got our first tractor in 38. That was, and, uh, everything was done by hand back then, before then, but horses cut all the corn by hand and everything, husk it by hand. I think we got the first corn picker in the early 40s, about 42, I think. And we had a, got a combine and hay miller in, in the early 40s. And I think we had the third combine in the county here. And we got, and after the war, then when we got hybrid corn and uh, Weed spray and all that stuff, it's, it, it improved the yield like everything. And back uh, the first hybrid corn we got was only $7 for a bushel. Now how much is it, Daddy? It's over $200 for a 50-pound bag. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, but farming used to be a way of life, but it's a business now. It's a... Uh, Back when we was kids at home, uh, your main thing besides farming was to keep enough to food for the year. I mean, you had to grow. You, you didn't go to the grocery store. There wasn't no grocery store you could buy anything in. You had to raise and plant ahead all the time. And... Uh, you had no seed. You had to save your own seed every year. And uh, I know that uh, Dad and Mother, they were pretty particular about a lot of things, but to make sure they had enough food to get through the winter. And, but, uh, Dad, he, uh, he always... Uh, planned ahead and he had uh, crops planted that he wanted to so, <coughs> like potatoes and stuff he always had enough of them that you know, he had some extra he, he could uh, sell some if he needed to and, uh, Grandma always sold eggs he had uh, he planted a lot of trees uh, fruit trees we had all kind of fruit, and Mother would can that, and, uh, and if it had any extra and more than this, she could can, where well, they'd dry it. They had mm -hmm. dried peaches and dried fruit, and, and they used to dry the sweet corn. And, and uh, we uh, we always uh, had plenty to eat. We never went hungry. And that, that, uh, even during a depression era, when th times was tough, uh, but. Uh, we raised our own food and we had plenty of it. And uh, Dad, he uh, 
Well, dad and mother both, they had a lot of skills that we don't have today. Mother, she could sew and cook and clean and do most anything that needed to be done. She could play the organ. <laughs> Dad, he was a stonemason in his younger years. He cut stone. And then he was, a, him and his brother built houses in town for a couple of years. And he was a good carpenter. And, but he, he liked to farm and he, uh, Back then, we didn't have no fertilizer or anything. But uh, manure was valuable stuff back then. We had crop rotation, then they had to usually put in a ear of corn, and then they'd put that corn ground into wheat in the fall, the, cut the corn, shock it, and then they'd go in and drill the wheat in the corn ground. And then they, after the wheat was up, in the wheat, you'd sow clover. And you had clover one year for hay, and then the second year of hay was Timothy, and we kept that for the horses. And then you went back to uh, switch back to corn again. You were on a four year rotation. Back then, uh, they had, had no lime, and there was a limestone in the soil around there, and you could dig it out. And uh, Dad would build what to build a lime. Lime kill and burn it every year, or not every year, but every so often they'd burn one of the lime out, dig a, they'd just dig a stone out and, and make a big pile of, of coal and, and wood and it'd burn for two or three weeks to heat that stone up enough to, that it would slack, what they call slack in the lime. And, but uh, then they got commercial lime and then. The first lime we got, I think, was six dollars a ton spread. The corn back then, uh, the corn planter, they had what they called check wire. Uh, you, you, your planter was equipped to, to you could plant two or three or four grains in a hill, and, and this uh, check wire had a button on it, and it went, went through the corn planter, and every forty inches. It had a button, and that button would trip the planter and it would drop three grains of corn. And the reason for that was that uh, you know, your wire would have stayed the same place all the time and you had to, your row run both ways. You could cultivate your corn crossways or lengthways. The way you had to keep the weeds out was either cultivating or hoeing it. But that, uh, then we got uh, 2,4-D come out after the war. And that, mm -hmm. Took care of the most of the weeds. It just, and after that, we went to drilling the corn in rows and just cultivating it one way, and now they don't even cultivate it. It's, everything's different today. <laughs> not many farmers living anymore that uh, grew up back in mm. there. But uh, I think uh, our mother and father, their generation, is the ones that really started this thing. Because uh, uh, they had uh, improvement. They made the original, and uh, we've just improved on it. You just take it. Uh, you used to cut the wheat with the binder and then thrash it with the thrasher. Mm -hmm. And then they made the combine, just combine the two implements into one mm -hmm. to do the same job. And, and it's the same way with a lot of other stuff that uh, we've had that uh, they've done that way. But uh, I think the, the biggest thing that uh, helped the farmer has been the uh, uh, chemicals and, and the improved seed and the fertilizer. But... Uh, Back then, if you got 30 bushel of wheat, you, we thought we had something. Now, <laughs> if you don't get 80 or 90, you got a poor crop. You've seen so many changes. What do you think's next? Like, what do you think? What do you think it's going to be like in well, 10 it, or 20 years? It, it's the the big guy's going to get bigger, and the small guy's going to disappear. It, uh, it's that way now, Panera. They got people farming. Thousands of acres where mm -hmm. back then in the, in the horse days they only could farm a couple hundred uh, livestock is uh, all.
commercial anymore. I mm-hmm. mean, it used to be, well, not too many years ago when we had the auction here in Shockton and everything. Everybody raised some, ho- some hogs and cattle mm-hmm. or something. They had a sale every Friday down there and sell the auction, but uh, now it's uh, only got two or three people in the county that's raising their hogs, and they're raising them all, and it's the same with cattle, mm-hmm. milk. Used to everybody milk a few cows, and now it's two or three big dairies in the county. The land's getting scarce, too. It's uh, the highways scene. and everything's taken out a lot of ground. They got this oil boom going now, that's going to take out a lot of ground again. Mm-hmm. But that, uh, that land is not available very often, only about mm-hmm. once in a lifetime.